and we're back to learning to code and we are finally at the last one in a responsive web design section on freecocamp.org it's yet again another certification project it's a personal portfolio web page and as always i'm going to show you how to pass these so here's an example that's linked you can try to recreate it for your own personal training you can start it differently do it differently add different content obviously but I'm just going to show you how to pass these tests and what you do with it afterwards is up to you. It's going to be a portfolio web page, so you have to create something like this anyway for yourself. As always, let us go over the boilerplate first. We need the doc type, the HTML, head and body. Within the head, we need meta for the jar sets, for the responsiveness, and we need to link our styles.css. Let me also give it a title. And then we're done with the basic outline. That's not part of the running tests, but it's a good idea to add it so that you treat this project as a regular project. Now let's start with user story bullet point one. We need a welcome section and we also need a nav bar, which would be bullet point six. So let me create the nav bar first. For now I just keep it like this, so opening closing text for the nav element. And now I add the welcome section. I need the section element for it. And I need to have an ID of welcome section. Inside of it, we need an H1 element that contains text, which would be bullet point number two. Let me just call it my portfolio web page, something like this. Bullet point three should have a projects section. I'll add it right here below the welcome section. And it needs to have the ID of projects Bullet point four, it should contain at least one element with a class of project tile to hold a project. We can, for example, use a div container for that. Class name is given, so project tile. Don't forget to close it. And the project section should contain at least one link to project, which would be bullet point number five. We can make these div containers contain a link. So usually when you have your portfolio, you may have an image or something. And you turn this image into a link. So as the href, you would have some URL that redirects the user when he clicks on the image. 
to your actual project. Let me read it carefully here so that I don't miss something. Oh, we should be good. So I'll add an image. And you'll just add the source. So whatever you have here, dot jpg for example. And then add an alt text. And you can see it appears now on the right hand side. And it is a link as I have nested this image inside of the A element. So it's clickable. And for each project that you want to have in your portfolio, just copy paste this div container, this entire thing. Let me change the alt text to second project. So this would be the way I would do it for the project section. Let's check the next one. So we need our navbar and it needs to have an ID of navbar. So I'll add that. Bullet point seven, it should contain at least one link. I will use it for internal linking so it navigates through our website. So I add an unordered list. Inside the list items are supposed to be our internal links on the website. So let me make the first one about me. And I want this to be a link, so I nest it inside of the A element. And as the href, we're going to use this hashtag sign and then the name of the ID of our section. The first one it was the welcome section, so I copy paste it here. We need only one, but let me add that for the other section as well. So I just copy this entire part, paste it inside of my unordered list two times. Second section was the projects. So I'll change that. Let me also change the anchor text. Let me read the next one. Any profile links? So let me change that to profile link. I'll change the anchor text to Maybe like contact or where to find me, something like this. Now I need to create that section. But first let me add some text here so that we can see the welcome section properly. So you would just add some text usually on a portfolio page where you explain who you are, what you do what experience you've got, something like this. So I'll just add a paragraph. And for the project, I'll add an H2. Now let's get to our third section where we want to have the profile links. So we are at bullet point eight. The ID needs to be profile minus links. So the profile minus link should be the ID for a specific link, not the section. So let me change that in the unordered list as well as the href.
and we should link to either FreeCodeCamp or to GitHub, something like this. So let me just paste the URL that we're on, so FreeCodeCamp.org. It needs to open in a new tab, so we need the target attribute with a value of underscore blank. If we now click on it, it's going to open in a new tab, so this is exactly what we want. But we also need an anchor text right here. I call it my free cooker profile, and if I click on it, it's going to give me this message, so it works. We've done that correctly, and you can use this entire part of the code and copy paste it for every link that you want to add. So maybe you want to also add your GitHub, maybe your social media. If you do, don't forget to change the href. I don't know, is it github.com or is it .org? I kind of forgot, but you get the idea. So I'll leave it at that. What else? So the next parts are CSS only. So we should be already fine here for the HTML part. Let me run it. But I've forgotten to add the ID of profile link to our links. So the anchor elements need to have an ID of profile minus link. Let me add that to both. Let me run it again to see if I've got it all. So the only things that are missing are now the CSS parts of this project. So let me open the starts.css. You may want to add a root selector on top. That's always a good idea to do that first, so that you don't forget. You want to have the navbar at the top of the viewport, and it should always be there. So let me find it right here. We can use the nav element selector or the nav bar ID selector. Doesn't matter here. And I set the position to fixed. And set the top to zero. So this is going to screw up with our layout, but it lets you pass the test. And the other sections, you don't want to have them overlap with the nav bar. So it's a good idea to style them, even though it's not needed to pass the test. The easiest way to do so is to just find the first section after the navbar, which was the welcome section, so I used the ID selector for it. And then you can just add a margin here for top. Five hundred was way too much. Fifty wasn't enough, so let me use one hundred. So this fixed the problem, and we can move on to the final one. So you need a media query, and the way to write it is just to use add media, then a condition, and afterwards what you want it to execute when the condition is met. Maybe you want to have a mix with, let's say, five hundred pixels, and then have the website do something. So whatever you need here for your portfolio web page. But this is the outline that you need to pass all of the tests. As I've said, I'm just going to show you how to pass them and it's up to you to fill this website with content. But the elements that I've shown you, they need to be part of your website so that you can get through this last certification project. And then we're done with the response of web design on free CoCamp. So it was 20 courses in total. You'll find them all in my playlist. It should be in the video description, so in the description below this video. And afterwards, we are going to head into the JavaScript section. And I may also add some more web design stuff. Maybe I'll do a playlist where I code for you websites from start to finish. And I'll show you real life examples of web projects. I think that should be interesting. 
but I'm definitely going to go through all of the other sections on freecodecamp.org. So stay tuned if you're interested in JavaScript and all of the other stuff. As always, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.